Hello, I'm Dr. Sharita Golden, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for Johns Hopkins Medicine. We created this educational series for you on the COVID-19 vaccine because we want you, our employees, to be able to make the most informed decisions for yourselves. We have gathered experts across our organization to contribute to this video series, and we welcome you to watch either the entire series or just those components that are most relevant to you. Thank you. I'm going to start first with the Pfizer study. Um, so as I mentioned, this is an mRNA vaccine. It's a little bit modified um, so that it's more stable. Um, it, it is encapsulated or it's within a lipid nanoparticle, a lipid coat, and it codes for the spike protein. This vaccine is given as two doses, three weeks apart, and there are injections into the arm. And the phase three trial included four 43,000 adults age 18 and older, but it also, um, they expanded this study to include a trial with 16 and 17 year olds, and then another trial with 12 and 15 year olds, and both of these studies are underway. For both of these, um, for all of these studies, the planned follow-up for these volunteers is two years. Um, this vaccine is a little bit challenging to handle because it has to be stored at minus 70 degrees Celsius, which is ultra deep um, cold, but uh, you know, hospitals and labs have freezers that go that cold. So I'm going to um, share with you the safety data that has been reported. Um, and this is both from the phase one studies as well as from the phase three studies that were presented to the FDA Vaccines Related Biological Products Advisory Committee. Um, so from local events, when you get the vaccine, pain at the injection site is the most common and happens in actually the majority of participants. The pain can be worse after the second dose than, than the first dose. Um, a few participants also complain of redness and swelling at the site of the injection, but that's less than 5%. The side effects seem to be a little bit worse in younger adults compared to older adults. So people under the age of 55 compared to people over the age of 55. Um, from systemic events, fatigue, headache, muscle aches, and chills are the most common systemic responses to the vaccine. Um, these also are a little bit worse after the second dose than the first dose. And um, the, you can even have some fever. And in young adults, it can be up to 15% after the second dose. There's less fever in, in the older adults. Um, generally, the fevers are low grade. Um, this, these side effects are not... Um, anything to necessarily be worried about, they're really an indication that your body, your immune system is responding to the vaccine and creating the protection that you need um, in order to prevent you from getting sick with COVID. So um, the efficacy results for the Pfizer vaccine, I have to say were beyond what we even could have hoped. Um, as I mentioned, there's over 43 uh, thousand people enrolled. They tried to make this studies, these studies um, for all of the studies representative of America. And so 10% um, of the people who were enrolled were African American, 4% were Asian, 26% were Hispanic or Latino, um, and 21% were over the age of 65. The efficacy and the, um, the application for the emergency youth authorization was based on the first 170 cases of COVID-19 in the trial. There were 162 cases in the placebo recipients and eight cases in the vaccine group. So these are anybody who had any symptoms of COVID, we tested them. And these are the people who were found to be COVID positive. The efficacy is 95% effective starting from seven days after the second dose. But if you looked at the data that was presented by um, presented at the FDA, really um, there was much fewer cases in the vaccine group, even about two weeks after the first dose. But it really took two, two full doses to be maximally effective. And what's very encouraging because older people, um, it's much harder to, um, to have a vaccine that is effective in older people because the immune system will wane as we get older. Um, the vaccine is 94% effective in people over the age of 65. There, um, the vaccine also seems to be effective at preventing severe COVID, which you would expect if it's preventing all COVID. 
There were 10 severe cases in the, um, in the study. Nine of them occurred in placebo recipients and one of them in um, a vaccine recipient. That vaccine recipient um, met the criteria for severe disease because their blood oxygen level dropped a little bit, but they did not um, need hospitalization, whereas several people in the placebo group who developed severe disease ended up being hospitalized and a few ended up in the ICU. For all of these studies, there is an independent data safety monitoring board that reviews the safety data in real time to make sure that there isn't any safety signals that they need to be worried about. Um, they actually have the power to stop the study if they are worried about a safety signal. And when the data safety monitoring board reviewed this, um, these vaccines, there was no serious safety concerns that were identified. The um, company applied for um, EUA or emergency youth authorization um, submitted on November 20th and the FDA vaccines and related biological products advisory committee met and reviewed the application on December 10th and we are anticipating that the FDA will give this authorization um, at any time. Um, I also have to point out that the vaccine has been um, has had emergency use authorization already granted in both the United Kingdom on December 2nd and in Canada. And so is being used in those two countries already in, in their high-risk populations. <laughs>